Good afternoon. Now the clock is 2.30 p.m. And um, today's event is with Bear Bear Nordic and the head of IR, Ralph Sass Sørensen. This event is a full year uh, 2002 uh, report, guidance and pipeline. The event is in English. And for the participants, please, on your right side in the chat, post the chat, sorry, post the questions you might have for, for Ralph, and I will pass them on during the, the session. So with that said, I would like to welcome Rolf Sassersen. Welcome, Rolf. Yeah, thank you, Klaus. And uh, welcome, everyone. And uh, good afternoon. And um, thank you for this opportunity to walk you through the uh, highlights uh, of the year and um, the uh, major events we have seen uh, recently uh, as 2022 has been uh, I dare to say the most busy year we have had ever so just uh, rapidly go through the highlights on this slide um as everybody i think know monkeypox is what would be uh what we all remember 2022 for uh the outbreak started in may and uh, we have delivered vaccines uh monkeypox vaccines to more than 70 countries we have made contracts to a large number of countries and to organizations uh, Hera, Paho, uh, etc., etc. We have uh, contracted, uh, exercised contracts in 22, and uh, we will exercise some of these contracts this year in 23. And we have contracts that expand long into the future. Um, contracts we have already signed. Um, RSV uh, is also a key driver, has been in 22, and will indeed be uh, a key driver in 23 as well. Uh, this or last year, we uh, finalized our phase three study with 20,000 subjects, and uh, that was fully enrolled. We managed to get FDA breakthrough designation and prime status from uh, the European authorities, and we also made a, a deal with Nuance Pharma for China and some Asian markets. Our COVID program, which is currently in late stage phase three, we are currently recruiting the last patients in that program. We uh, delivered very attractive six month durability data and we are looking to uh, forward to announce hopefully some interesting data very soon in the first half all that managed to <clears throat> give us a remarkable year when it comes to our financial performance we delivered more than 3 billion in revenue and more than 300 million in ebitda the EBITDA of the results is four times more than what we delivered in 21. And the revenue is approximately double compared to what we saw last year. If you compare that to our forecast, and I come back to that in more detail, to what we guide for this year, 2023, you will see that, again, we <coughs> guide a revenue line of approximately 6 billion. So again, we are guiding a doubling of our revenue, but this time our results, we expect to make it seven times higher compared to what we did last year. So an extremely nice financial performance. I'll come back to that in more detail. So just before we go into the slides, I've just give you some background. We, in 2022, 
announce or um, formulated a vision that we wanted to be one of the largest pure play vaccine companies in 2025. And um, M&A should be part of that, but also, of course, um, the uh, uh, license and distribution agreements and commercial excellence of our existing uh, performance should be part of that. And of course, our uh, pipeline uh, would also be part of that. All that should lead us to our dream being one of the largest pure play vaccine companies in just a very few years. I mean, 25 is just around the corner. So <clears throat> M&A, as you can see, was part of our strategy. And just a few weeks ago, we actually signed a very large M&A uh, contract as we expanded our portfolio. Um, we bought um, some vaccines out of emergent biosolutions. Um, you can see in this slide, we're talking about Vivotif and Vaxcora. Uh, two vaccines, one is for cholera, one is another one is for typhus, and also a pipeline project, a late stage pipeline pr project, which is a treatment for chikungunya that will read out later this, this year. In this deal, we also took over a research uh, area in San Diego, a manufacturing site in, in Switzerland, and a smaller sales organization. So altogether, this was a plug and play acquisition, a very nice fit to our strategic uh, ambition to be one of the largest pure play, pure play vaccine companies. So how does that change the company? So this is how we will look when the deal is closed. It will take approximately two to three months after, from now on, after the signature. So we will have seven commercial products. We will have three in license products as we have now, but then we will have three late stage pipeline projects. Those projects I'll come back to, but they will all read out this year, which is a unique situation. We have never in Bavaria Nordic had three phase three projects reading out in the same year, ever, never before. So this is a unique situation. So this, is, this is an overview of how the company will look when the deal is closed. On the left side, you can see the products. And uh, here you should, of course, uh, take a special look at the uh, Baxcora and the Vivotif, as they are the two new products in our portfolio. And to the right, you should take a look at the second line, the Chikungunya, the late stage project in phase three, that are new comers, new kits on the block in our pipeline and product portfolio. So what kind of uh, potential are we looking at what have we bought into? So <clears throat> the new products, if you look to the, to the left, you can see that the two new commercial products, they have um, market opportunities of approximately 250 and 75 million US dollars. And adding to the pipeline project of Chikungunya, 500 million US dollar, uh, it adds up to 825 million U US dollars altogether. This is, of course, a competitive area altogether, but we hope and we expect that we can get a fair share of those uh, market opportunities that we that we see in those three different areas, the two marketed products and the uh, development uh, project with Chikungunya. So very nice add-on to our existing portfolio uh, we see with this one. But also a few words to the existing portfolio. Uh, the rabies business is continuing to grow 
like I don't know what. Uh, you can see the market in Germany that uh, you can see that to the right uh, is growing enormously. And that is, of course, coming from very, very low levels. It was significantly hit during COVID. But now, uh, since traveling is coming back, rapidly coming back, you see very uh, nice growth rates. You, know, you see, you know, fantastic growth rates uh, in Germany, which is a good proxy from the European market. In the US, uh, where rabies is actually endemic, and uh, the US market was not really hit as much as Europe during COVID, but still you see really nice growth rates, 32% uh, year over year, and you see levels uh, now that is above pre-COVID levels. So we think that we can, we actually have a good share of, of that um, because we have, uh, put a lot of effort into growing the awareness in the U.S. markets. So uh, we believe that we are part of that uh, growth um, and we take a lot of pride in that. So a very important growth driver to the company. TBE is a more mixed picture. Overall, uh, the, the market is growing, um, but... Uh, quarter by quarter, you see some quarters, you actually see a, a slight decline. Um, so the, the market is not really recovering uh, after COVID, uh, as we see with TBE. We are expecting that in 23 this year, we will see a rebound of the TBE market. And uh, that, of course, will be a clear benefit to our business. So looking into the outlook of for this year, as previously mentioned, we are guiding 6 billion top line and 2.2 billion in uh, EBITDA for the year, which is a significant increase compared to last year and compared to 21. So a very nice improvement. And that is uh, by far driven by the all the contracts from monkeypox, but all, also the, the very significant uh, performance from our rabies business. If you look at the news flow where you should look out, that is, of course, uh, could there be new orders from monkeypox? We think there will be new orders. Um, we have not included that in our guidance um, so far, but hopefully there could be additional contracts coming to us during the year. That would just be nice add-on. Uh, but then, of course, the news flow is concentrated around the three phase three programs, RSV, chikungunya, and COVID-19 that will read out in uh, Q2, Q3, and Q4 this year. Uh, so there will be a lot of news flow coming. Uh, and as I mentioned, the uh, acquisition of the products and the uh, pipeline product from Emergent Biosolutions has to be closed within the next three months. That means that we will add on some additional revenue and uh, there will be some uh, restructuring costs. So after we have closed the deal, we will come out with a new guidance uh, that is slightly changed compared to the one we guide upfront. Thank you a lot, Rolf, for taking us through your yeah, very busy 2022. And it's really nice to see if we assume that you, you get approval of Emergen, that you actually transform into a global vaccine player. 
Um, so with that said, I open up for, for questions and I see a lot of questions are already coming in. But let's dwell a little bit um, in respect of the guidance, Ralph, because now you yeah. mentioned out of those six billion, and this guidance is of course ex-emergent as you uh, as you stressed a couple of times, and, and you will recalculate if, if you get the approval. But out of those six billion, you assume 4.4 billion of those um, coming from MPOX. And it's right, it, it's right to say, and, and you mentioned that in your general report as well, this is only booked orders. And you have quite extensive uh, collaborations with, with, with different um, with different states. Could you elaborate a little, you know, what what are we looking into? I, I, I'm going to, or is it possible to experience a year like 2022 again? Or is it on a slightly lower level going forward? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, we are looking into a monkeypox. 2022 was... Um, something we have never seen before, an unprecedented situation um, starting in, in May 6, and we should not uh, expect or hope to see the same thing, uh, which means that what we saw last year was a large number of smaller contracts uh, from different countries, you know, uh, countries ordering 20,000 doses, 50,000 doses, et cetera, et cetera. That is not expected to happen this year. No. Uh, the situation has changed, so we are uh, looking into more strategic discussions with countries. Um, so we are looking into fewer but larger uh, discussions, uh, larger contracts uh, with fewer countries, uh, very interesting uh, discussions. Um, the reason why they are not included in our guidance is that it's very difficult to put timing on these uh, discussions, when they will end and, and size, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, we are very optimistic that um, uh, contracts will be signed, but size and timing is difficult. Um, we have uh, dialogues with a number of countries, uh, countries that have considerations of building stockpile of, you know, monkeypox, smallpox uh, stockpiles. Um, so it's a, it's a very diff a different situation compared to last year where we saw a number of these, uh, you know, uh, short-term contracts. Now we need urgently uh, 50,000 doses of monkeypox. Uh, this is not the situation. So unless we see a, a new outbreak, um, I think we will we will see a change in in uh, buying pattern this year. But never say never. You know. Uh, the uh, party season will start, and the prides and and uh, uh, Etc. Uh, will start and things may change. We still see a a few number of of impox cases uh, uh, in the U.S., for instance, and in in, in the European countries. So um, impox is still uh, around, uh, and it could uh, you know uh, explode potentially. But so, is, is, it, is it fair to say, Ralph, that there's a six billion or all, all else equal? It's more like a floor guidance than you know uh, best case guidance. Uh, it's, it's not a best case. Uh, definitely, it's not a best case guidance. Uh, definitely not. But it's you know since this is a combination of of. Um, different products you cannot say it's a floor guidance it's a floor when it comes to to monkeypox as it is only signed contracts that's Good correct point. but uh, it also includes our best estimates when it comes to revenue in terms of uh, tb and rabies so in that sense you cannot say it's a floor 
uh, guidance. Fair enough, fair enough, bro. Okay, and I see some questions coming up here in the chat. So, so most of them, of course, related to your pipeline. Um, so, so if we, we focus a little on, on your COVID program, um, you know, things have changed. We are post COVID now. Do you still do you still see a market for for COVID? And could you elaborate a little of what is going on in the U.S., uh, Ralph? Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I, yeah, uh, I can say that we still see a market for COVID. I mean, people are still being vaccinated uh, for COVID. Um, uh, and the, the market for COVID in the US or the regulatory environment is extremely dynamic. It's changing, uh, rapidly changing, I would say. Um, the FDA guidelines uh, um, is changing, um, but they right now the um, the guiding the guidance is that uh, they need or they want to have uh, COVID vaccines that is adjusted to the latest variants um, of concern. Uh, so modified uh, COVID vaccines. So um, um, so there's been a, this discussion uh, around uh, monovalent or bivalent uh, vaccines, um, and um, uh, you know our vaccine uh, has is is a monovalent vaccine, but has shown a very nice protection against uh, variants of concern. Um, so right now, the regulatory environment in the U.S. is is difficult for us, uh, but it may change. But right now, it's, it's, it's actually quite difficult in the U.S., I must say. Uh, but it I, let, let's see. I think, as, as always, uh, data will determine the future of, of our COVID vaccine. Uh, we will have uh, our data available, expected towards mid-year. Mm -hmm. um, we will have data, efficacy data, uh, towards uh, mid-year. We will also um, have durability data from our phase two study uh, around mid-year. And uh, durability is still one of the issues where the current mRNA vaccines from Pfizer and Moderna is still, you know, a bit weak, uh, I must say. So, I mean, the jury is still out, uh, we think. So let's see. Let's wait for the data and see uh, how the competitive landscape is, is really uh, looking at that point in time. Good, Rolf. And then let's jump in just uh, quickly to, to MPOX, because the version you have today is a fluid version. But, but you're working on a, a free stride version as well. Um, there's some questions about that. Does that change anything at all, Ralph, besides distribution and logistic? Um... Uh, <clears throat> it's most likely that uh, the, uh, the free stride version will have, uh, will mostly have an impact on, on uh, smallpox uh, stockpiling um it it may not have uh, as, as huge an impact on on monkeypox um uh, but uh most monkeypox uh contracts at least last year and and this year uh, has been used uh, uh at a very uh uh, short with a very short notice uh, from from uh, delivery to to uh, the patient, um, mm. so so um, uh, shelf life has not really been an issue, um, and that that's you know as you remember that's really the difference between the equifrozen and the free stride uh, version. Uh, that's the shelf life difference. Uh, it's the exact same vaccine. Um, so uh, I think the the significant difference will be for countries that have a desire to stockpile 
uh, smallpox uh, of larger scale. Thanks a lot, Rolf. And then let's jump into RSV, uh, a very interesting area as well. Um, and for the audience out there, RSV is developed on the same platform, the proprietary platform of Amer Nordic. Um, lately, we have seen um, some uh, some uh, writings uh, about GSK and Pfizer. They were called for a hearing in FDA regarding safety issues. Do you experience similar side effects, Ralph, uh, uh, from your phase two study? Um, our, our phase three study um, was um, full enrolled last year, 20,000 subjects or plus, um, and we did not see the exact same uh, issues that was on the uh, meeting the other night, uh, as you refer to, as they are considered serious adverse events. Um, so they would be, they would have been reported. Uh, so we know for, for a fact that those, those exact uh, events have not been part of our study. Uh, having said that, um our study is still not unblinded so um, we have very little or no insight into the data um uh, so it's it's way too early to say um uh, and and compare um the only you know consideration we can have uh, looking from the outside is that our vaccine is as you mentioned klaus uh is built on the MBA BN platform. And if there is one thing, one characteristic that the MBA BN platform is known for is the, the uh, safety. Uh, it's, mm. very, um, it's a very uh, well-tolerated platform. We have numerous data and uh, we had that before, and you can say that was even expanded during the MPOX uh, pandemic last year, where it was widely used uh, all over the world. So we have very, very uh, broad safety documentation that uh, the MBA platform is really, really safe uh, in, in uh, people that are even significantly immunocompromised. So um, up front, we think that our platform as such is a good platform for an RSV vaccine. But, you know, we need to be cautious. Phase three data uh, 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 always need to be, be uh, we need to be careful. We need to see the data first. And okay. uh, uh, those data uh, will come uh, very soon. Um, we don't have to wait more than uh, a few months. I mean, it, they will come here in, in first half probably. So uh, that would be uh, very interesting to see. You you have been granted a quite nice um, um, status from both FDA and EMA on right. RSV uh, called the therapy designation. Could you elaborate a little on that? And, and is it only you or do Pfizer, GSK, Moderna got the same due to the disease? Um, huh. uh, <laughs> uh, I am not sure whether they all have uh, both. I'm, I don't think they all have both designations uh, as we have, uh, but I'm absolutely not sure it means that you have a preferred status with the authorities it means that you have better access to the regulators to discuss data uh, and and process it means that potentially you can get a, a faster process of your data so uh, ultimately uh, it's really worth a lot in getting the approval if your data is uh, 
good. Um, you, you may end up in a more smooth process with the regulatory authorities and even a faster approval at the end of the day. Could, could you elaborate a little on what kind of efficacy do you see, Rolf, uh, and compared to the peers? Is it, is it inline or is it outlier compared to, to what you see? Uh, and that's probably on, on, on your phase two data, yeah? Yeah. Uh, and and uh, uh, let's be cautious again and not to compare uh, uh, because we need to compare apples to apples uh, always, of course. Um, but what we have seen so far, uh, we have demonstrated comparable, at least comparable data to what we've seen from Pfizer and GSK. Uh, we have conducted uh, a human challenge trial where we demonstrated a, a efficacy uh, in the range of 80% protection that was uh, in the range, the same range we saw with GSK and Pfizer. Uh, so that was promising, but um, the, the endpoint was slightly different compared to what we are to, to compete on, uh, so to speak, in phase three. So we need, again, Klaus, to be a bit cautious. Uh, but having said that, all the data we've shown so far in early stage development, uh, phase one, phase two, human challenge, our candidates have delivered very convincing data and compelling data comparable to the competitors. Uh, and we have a very, as I mentioned, a very uh, promising platform for especially this target group, which is the elderly uh, RSV uh, patients. Thanks a lot. Let's let's dive a little down to uh, TBE and uh, to um, to uh, your other vaccines. So it's it's right to understand, uh, Ralph, uh, just for the audience, TBE is not present in US today. Yeah, that that's correct. Uh, TBE is uh, endemic in in Europe and it's spreading. It's not. Uh, does not exist in the U.S. Uh, however, uh, the U.S. authorities have actually asked to get an approval uh, for a TBE vaccine in the U.S. As it's, <coughs> sorry, it may suddenly occur in the U.S. and is also, um, uh, it could be interesting to vaccinate for instance, soldiers going to Europe before they uh, go abroad. So for that reason, U.S. authorities have asked to get an approval also in the U.S., even though uh, TB does not currently exist in the U.S. Good. And then then uh, shortly, because then you, you have rabies, you have U.S., and, and now when you get the approval uh, for emergent, you are able to carry out uh, the, the cholera and, and um, the typhoid vaccine uh, as well. So, so those two products, are they already in the market now? Uh, I know they, they got approval a couple of years ago. Um, and, and how are they selling in the market today? Uh, yeah, they. I mean, we are talking about more or less a a relaunch of products that was previously approved and launched and then came COVID. So uh, what we're facing now is two products that is, has, one is, has just been launched and the other one is about to be relaunched. So we are talking about a, let's say new beginning uh, mm -hmm. for those two products. Uh, so we will have the responsibility to show that we can make a new beginning for those two products. Um, we can do better than uh, the previous owner did, uh, <clears throat> or you can say the previous owner, Emergent, were unlucky. They 
they took over the products and uh, uh, shortly after COVID came, so they didn't really have a chance to, to uh, perform on those products. Um, but uh, hopefully we will have a good chance to exercise. We have shown with uh, especially our rabies uh, business that we have built our <coughs> sorry, we have built our own uh, commercial infrastructure and we have uh, built the awareness and we have managed to exercise on the market and show very strong performance in that market. We hope we can be able to do the same. And those two new products will have synergistic effect in the sales force in the US. Uh, our small sales force at this point only have one product and in the future they will have three and maybe in the future four products and that will be a huge benefit for for our sales. Yeah, and actually some of the price you pay <coughs> for emerging is to, to the performance. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, well, and if we stay a little bit with synergies, uh, Rolf, there's a question here about oper oper in an operational perspective, synergies uh, on, the, on the production sites that you actually buy into Bavarian. Where do you see synergies in that in that sense? I think you mentioned it in the report, but you could probably elaborate a little on that. Yeah, yeah. Now we we are taking over this uh, you can say plug and play uh, manufacturing site in Bern in Switzerland, and um, if there is one thing we have um, known the last couple of years is that capacity. Uh, is a key issue in the vaccine business. We uh, talked about capacity, capacity, lack of capacity last year during uh, the uh, impox outbreak. Uh, have you capacity enough to handle the outbreak, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And uh, the year before, uh, it was all about discussions of capacity during COVID. Uh, where the the different COVID uh, players try to buy manufacturing capacity uh, from each other. We have, uh, as you know, a large manufacturing site north of Copenhagen in Quisco, mm -hmm. um, um, but uh, it's a manufacturing site which is difficult to expand uh, further. Um, so um, this is a, a great opportunity for us to be able to take over this uh, site in, in Bern where you have uh, the two existing products and chikungunya and we have <coughs> the opportunity also in the future maybe to bring future products into that site should it be um, potentially I mean, uh, it could be that RSV in the future could be in that site uh, or other commercial products. So it's it's really a good opportunity uh, for us to expand our uh, manufacturing footprint. As you may remember, we did a collaboration last year with Graham River in the US, uh, a filling partner. So manufacturing and filling capacity is a key concern in this industry. And uh, this is a great opportunity for us to expand this uh, as part of, of uh, this deal. And uh, <clears throat> if you look at the valuation of what we're buying, um, if you were to build, if you could imagine that, if you were to to build a manufacturing site of that scale from a greenfield, that would be extremely expensive in itself. Mm. So uh, it is an, an attractive part of what we actually take over. Uh, we get a number of qualified people on that site as well at a time where it's actually difficult to get hold of qualified uh, people. 
Mm. The same goes, uh, by the way, uh, in the R&D facility in, in San Diego, uh, where we take over a group of people uh, that is uh, currently handling the chikungunya uh, project. Good, Ralph. And then there's a question here from Simon about current runway. <laughs> I think he addresses the COVID market. And we have talked about that before, Ralph. Uh, should we should we equal the COVID market with the inf, uh, with the flu market, and if so, are we talking about five or ten billion dollars a year, market size wise? Yeah. Uh, again, we we've talked about the regulatory uh, difficulties on the COVID market um, already. Um, we believe that uh, COVID. Uh, could be uh, a future market uh, similar to what we know from flu. Flu, the flu market today is, I believe, uh, a, a an annual market in the range of uh, six point seven billion dollar annual sales, and uh, COVID could likely develop into that uh, kind of market size. If you are, uh, uh, if you see a a good uh, use of COVID vaccines in the future, but for us, uh, it's a prerequisite that we can get access to the U.S. market, uh, that the regulatory uh, um, uh, constraints we see right now is is somewhat lifted. Uh, but the market could be a flu-like market in size. Yes. Thanks a lot, Ralph. I don't know if there's any other questions from, from the audience. Doesn't seem like there's any other questions popping up. So with that said, Ralph, thanks a lot for a very good presentation. And uh, we look forward to the approval of Emergent. <laughs> and we look forward uh, to you coming back here uh, at H.C. Anderson, and I would like to thank uh, the audience for, for all the good questions. And with that said, enjoy your day, everybody, and we will close this event. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.